Hi guys, welcome back to the Fast Break. I'm your host, Koketo. We have Shaz Ones on the show. We have Golden State Warrior fan, Umi. And um, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to introduce you, Faro. Are you in pain? Are you Faro today? What's going on? Hey, let's get it over with. James <laughs> <laughs> Celtics fan, Faro. Hmm. All right, guys. So, obviously, we're within the NBA Finals. The season's about to end. Game five was this morning, last night. Um, and I don't know. Far, I don't want Faro to start, actually. I would love Who's to me? start. Oh, <laughs> okay, actually, yeah. I mean, No, no, no. Let's, no let let, a, let a, a potential championship winner go in first before I go in. Yeah, Ubu, you go, Ubu, you go so, ahead. Bumi, you started with your prediction being Golden State in six, no? Seven. But it's in seven. Okay, so your mm. prediction was Golden State in seven, right? Right now, you guys are one game away. Could be Golden State in six. Are you saying that the Boston Celtics could actually win game six? So, I mean, I think probably when the series started, that's what I thought. But I think... Mm-hmm that the Warriors are going to try and close it out in six. I mean, I'm not sure it's going to happen, but I do think they're going to try and close it out in six. And I think for me, the big momentum changer was game four, right? I think that the way game four ended and just how the Warriors and Steph performed in game four, for me, put a pin in the series for me. It was like, okay, this series is done after game four. It felt like the Celtics held up really well up until, you know, game four. And then it just felt like momentum completely shifted to the Warriors in that game. Um, And, you know, there was a lot said before the series started about the Warriors' experience um, in championship rounds. And I think that, I think that, you know, when game four happened and they became in control, that that experience just kicked in. All right. And then I have another question for you, right? What do you think the Celtics are doing wrong? Like, what's holding them back? That is a good one. Um, One, turnovers. I think Mm -hmm. that the Celtics haven't done a great job of taking care of the ball. That's been really Uh rough for them. We saw them guard Steph um, in the first four games in a way that just allowed him to get going. You know, I think that, you know, last night they tried to switch it up a little bit and Steph struggled. I think it was twofold. I think it wasn't just the Celtics defense. But I think the combination of Steph struggling and they did seem to switch up the defense a little bit. Um, but in the first, first four games, that drop coverage, I mean, Steph was just getting way too much space. Um, and this is the number one defense in the NBA, you know. So, and and we know that when they've turned the ball over badly, um, they've lost. And the other thing is, as well, in game four, the way the Warriors rebounded didn't give the Celtics a chance to win. You know, last night, the Celtics rebounded, um, the, out-rebounded the Warriors just a little bit. Yeah. But in general, when the Celtics are dominating the boards, which they should be, right? They're the more athletic team. They're the bigger team. So when they are dominating the boards, they're having good games. All right. And then, Shaz, you wanted to start. Um, mm. I'd like to know from you, like, what were your predictions, actually? Or did you have any? Uh, um, first of all, um, let me talk about the Warriors first before you try. But I think, once again, look, this Warriors team is is complete, guys. Like from from I was looking at I was just looking at the minutes. Jordan Poole played 14 minutes at 14 points. Gary Payton Jr. had 16 points in 26 minutes. Um, mm-hmm. Steph Curry struggled with only 16 points, but we always knew that Clay Thompson was going to have his Clay game. And yesterday was the Clay game, and he's 21. Nobody expected it. And also the biggest surprise for me throughout this whole season has been Andrew Wiggins. And yeah. Um, it's going to be sad when they break up this team, but Andrew Wiggins is probably the biggest impact player that's happening right now. 43 minutes, 26 points, I think 13, 13 boards. That was that was huge, you know. Th- this was his game as much as it was the clay game. This was his game. Um, I'm going to speak a little about Boston, or should I just let Faro just try? No, no, no. Um... So, so I'd like wait, to know wait, from you. you go on. I still, yeah? I still don't think that was Clay's game. I think Clay had a decent game, and I think yeah. that Clay is beginning to get more comfortable. But I'm still waiting for a game six Clay. It it was a Clay-ish game, you know. We yeah. we 
look, coming off the injuries that he's come off, we'd, I would nobody expected him to score like five three pointers in this game. You know, he like he really gave them a second wind. You know, um, so I was shocked with that, and nobody knew saw that coming. Andrew Wiggins really stepping up for Steph Curry because they bailed Steph Curry out yesterday. That was the biggest reason that I was shocked that Golden State players. got over the line. The role a bailout is really, a big word, Chaz. No, it's a bailout. For, I mean, the guy just scored for. He, no, he just scored 40 points and then he scored 16. No three pointers from from the greatest three pointers. Yeah. I mean, he's but you struggled. can't call it a bailout. Like, okay, but okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's have a bailout to... because uh, okay, no, no, yeah. it's a bailout if it's a bailout because if Andrew Wiggins had an Andrew Wiggins game and Jordan Poole had a yeah. Jordan Poole game and you know, Gary Payton didn't put up those scores, everyone's gonna look at Steph like you Bro. kind of blew this one as a superstar. And the max guy. But shooters have off nights. This is what I'm saying. But not like, the greatest, but you he's... You can't name a final series where a superstar hasn't had one bad game. It happens. Yeah, it but... happens to everybody. Throughout a seven-game series, there's going to be one game where your superstar, your guy, is not necessarily going to have the greatest night. And people are out here... Yes, Steph didn't score a three. But people are out here acting like Steph got in the game and scored three points, had zero rebounds. Do you know what I mean? Like, he had a decent performance... By the measure of any other NBA player, by the measure of anyone no, else in the rotation. Not by, but no, it but is a bailout. It's literally it is a bailout. It's literally a bailout. There's a negative connotation to using the word bailout. And I think is that it it's not fair to use that word. Like, why Why was he bailed out? I'm a, so you say he's a, bailing out everybody it. else by performing well? Yeah, he, you know, like, yo, the connotation he, is just not okay. No, when he bailed, he bailed out Draymond Green when Draymond Green had 4 3 and 2 and 1. <laughs> He bailed him out. It's an emotional thing from Bumi, but it's okay. It's okay. Shaz, you didn't you didn't touch yeah. on the Celtics. You didn't touch on the Celtics. So what's holding them back? What are they doing wrong? Um as a, as I as I initially indicated to Faro, I said Al Hoffman is not gonna do this all the time. <laughs> I called it a fluke the last time, and I was got called a hater. Al Horford is not that guy all the time. Yes, and I was proven correct. 40, 40 minutes, nine points, nine, nine, nine rebounds. If he doesn't come up to the... Uh, Jason Tatum can only play that hard. Jalen Brown, false prophet, again, 18 points. He's made to be oh. the marquee <laughs> superstar. Not if those Brown. two guys, If those two guys don't get going, and that's the one thing that is the biggest problem with the Celtics is that if one superstar gets going and the other one doesn't get going, they're going to lose a game. You know, every time they've won in the playoffs is when those guys are rocking and rolling. And if 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 Al Hoff is nine for nine, Jalen Brown eighteen struggled, which it's not really a struggle. He's allowed to have an eighteen point game, but like Marcus oh, Smart Jaylen's is not really good. Just 16. hold on, he's not the, but he's not the People greatest. Can him out you know, He's not the greatest. He's not the greatest, you know, three three point shooter of all time. But also, the Celtics do not have enough firepower. They're not like GSW. GSW have enough firepower, and it's over now. I, if they pull this one off, I'll be shocked. But um, Farrell, um, I'm glad you now know that Al Horford is not going to be your Finals MVP. What an offense to ever suggest that on Twitter. I'm so what? happy that. I'm so happy. I've never said Al Horford was going to be MVP. Dude. <laughs> no, there, mean, were talks, there, there were talks. There were talks like, oh, if the if there were talks, if, oh never, my God, he pulled like, it out. Ever. He pulled no, it no, out. But basketball no, is in the best place that it needs to be right now. Um, Cancun Laker, has Laker, given you to me. Laker legacy has been protected once again. Uh, Farah, over to you. <laughs> Farah, would you like to defend what they're saying about your team? Yeah, look, I think Shaz, Shaz's, Shaz's points and takes are completely wrong, but I'll, I'll get I'll get into. Wait, did you say completely? Than... Yes, wrong. man. Just let me, let me just let me speak. Let me, you had your shot. You had your chance. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown don't necessarily both have to get going for us to win games. We proved this. I think it was in game two where JT had like minimal points, but he got thirteen assists, right? But that's not the biggest problem for the Boston Celtics, dude. And I, I'm just tired i think i'm just tired of saying the same things because i gave them a warning after game seven in miami because i felt like the celtics haven't been good since the miami series since before the miami series rather so i gave them a warning and i said dude look in, you're going into the series the things you have to focus on 
or minimizing the turnovers, making your free throws, rebounding the ball, and don't play drop coverage. And amazingly, they managed to do all of those things incredibly badly. <laughs> it's like insane. It's like I made a list of all the things you shouldn't do, and then you went and did all like you went and did it the, the exact opposite. So that's that's just a bit wild to me. But hey, man, it is what it is. Um, some scary stats, I think, and. Um, look, I know people will say, yeah, the Celtics have been here before. They've been to two game seven scenarios. But right now, dude, the eye test is just so telling. Like, mm -hmm. Jason Tatum, I don't think I've ever been more disappointed in him than I am now because he just hasn't shown up the entire series. I mean, he's he's now got 95, combined 95 turnovers um, in, the, in, 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 in the whole postseason. And that's the highest by an individual player ever. Ever, like ever so that's that's a terrible stat to have and i feel like boston we're not asking much you know people say yeah boston celtics beat themselves but we're really not asking for a lot dude like asking for a professional team to get less than 16 turnovers in a game is not asking for a hell of a lot i'm really not asking for the world asking you to make your free throws like an under 16 team is not asking a lot, dude. How do you miss? You miss 10 free throws, you lose the game by nine. And the worst part of it is Golden State wasn't even that great in game five. Shout out to Steph in game four. I'll give, I'll give, I'll give him that. But Golden State were 0 for 19 from three in game five. Stephen Curry did not make a single three-pointer. That hasn't happened since 2018, bro. And you lose the game by double digits. Pack it in, dude. I'm... Done. I'm done. And Wait, what? Yeah, pack it on. I'll pack it in, dude. I, I said Celtics in seven, but honestly, guys, I just feel like these guys have dis disrespected the game so much. Arguing with the refs, like these touch fouls, calling and asking for the foul before you've completed completed the play is just so it's 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 like like shout out to my boy said he said cheese boy basketball. Because now I finally understand what cheese boy basketball is. I'm, like glad refs, I'm glad you get it. I'm glad you get it. Complaining to the refs. Complaining to the refs. Asking, getting technical fouls. Marcus. Oh, yesterday there was this. There was this um, sequence yesterday, where um, I think it was towards the end of the third, and Marcus Smart goes and gets a technical foul, right? Then straight after he gets an offensive foul. Golden State goes on the other side. Goes on the other side. They get they get a bucket, right? And it's, it's just so wild because it's just like you're not ready for the moment. You're just not ready for the big moment. Like, there's just zero, zero playing in the clutch here, dude. Like, we, when Marcus Smart was playing um, off, the, off the elbow and facilitating from there, we were getting good looks. We were actually doing really well, and that's what gave us the 19-4 uh, run. Yeah, I think it was 19-4 run um, into getting us back into the game and then taking the lead. Then all of a sudden, they just stopped doing it. It's like... What, 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 what am I missing here? And the nature of the turnovers as well is just like, is, does Jalen Brown have beard oil in his hands? Like, what's going on? Like, how is the board? <laughs> like, I understood in the Miami series. I completely understood oh, in the Miami series yeah, because oil. Miami played Miami played high up in the, in the lane, right? Where they would get a tip in the lane and then they'd go in transition and then score. These guys are literally just losing the ball off his knee and like, or, or, or driving in, having no plan, and then kicking it out to a player. And the worst team to do this against is Golden State. You, uh, the nature of the turnovers is what kills us. It really is. Golden State has scored 105 points off of turnovers, unforced turnovers from the Celtics. Which means, let me just put How it in perspective. How is it not forced so far? You can't say completely unforced turnovers. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll give. I'll, I'll get. I'll get. I'll get to Wiggins. I'll get to Wiggins and how he's got a Tatum in the series and how I feel like he's been a huge, huge key in this. But I feel like more often than not, guys, it's it's the Celtics beating themselves up. And and the thing is, shout out to Golden State for taking advantage of this because championship mentality is championship mentality. But just to put it into perspective, when you drive and you try and kick. Right? You drive in, you kick, and you turn the ball over. You've, already, you've automatically created an advantage situation where Golden State is going the other way with a five-on-four scenario. That's a fast break, dude. They, they will almost always punish you in transition. And even like, and, and, to make it, and to make it hurt even more, after, let's say Golden State misses that opportunity 
They've been out rebounding us. They're the smaller team and they rebound. How are you letting Andrew Wiggins get double doubles? How, how are you letting a small ball offense get double doubles on you? It's just, it's just incredibly frustrating and it's just so insane because you never know which Celtics team will pitch up. And I think it's just so tragic because we've seen how well the Celtics team can play when they're at it. But they, more often than not, they just choose to suck. And that's, Sarah, can I ask a question? that's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah. I got a question for you because you said my takes were completely wrong. Um, were you, are you happy with your Celtics bench production? Because I mentioned Gary Payton and Jordan Poole's no, production no, no. numbers. So these yeah, are the no, things no. when, yeah, the construction of this, this Boston team, and I'm looking at the minutes of this, that starting five. 44, Jason Tatum. 33, Al Horford. Williams, 30. Jalen Brown, 44. Marcus Smart, 40. That's, you know, they basically playing full games of basketball. They have to be gassed because they come off a seven-game series. Um, and I just don't think the construction of that team was ever going to go against that depth that um, that, that Golden State has, you know. Um, there's a lot of ice. What's irritating for me about Boston right now is they play going back to playing a lot of isolation ball against Jalen Brown and, yeah. and Jason Tatum. I think yeah. they've run out of ideas now, which is something I saw. I don't know if you agree. Now, see, so, so you've you mentioned know. you've mentioned two mutually exclusive things there, right? Where I personally I feel, and this is like down to it, there is a talent gap between the Celtics um, and the Warriors. But if you put it on paper, the talent gap isn't. It's more in the in, in on the side of the Celtics because they're they're bigger, they're more athletic. These are guys who, and and if we talk about the bench production, right? Derek White's been producing well off the bench up until this series. Peyton Pritchard came in here and there. Al Horford produced more often than not. Marcus Smart produced more often than not. Rob Williams, lob threat. No one can literally deal with his vertical threat. So if we're talking about talent, the Celtics have an abundance of it. It's just when the going gets tough and the moment now comes to who can pull up in the clutch, you now need to rely on your stars, on your franchise players. And this is now where the light now has to shine on Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Marcus Smart. Because guess what, buddy? The guys who have made the most turnovers in this series, in this playoff, are those three guys. And if that happens, it's curtains. Like, J we turned the ball over 16 times in game five. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, 13 of them alone, just the two of them. So when you look at Tatum's stats and you're like, okay, dude, you scored 27 points, you had a few assists, yeah, okay, game. But it's so inefficient because you keep turning the ball over. So, anyway, please, for, so great. just wait, one oh, thing though, two things actually quickly, in terms of what Shaz is saying about the bench, right, last night's numbers are crazy, like Warriors bench coming in scoring 29 versus the Celtics is 9, that's something you really have to look at when it comes to death, yeah. but I think the other thing that we really haven't looked at that much is fatigue, right, we knew that the Celtics coming off of two seven game series whereas the Warriors didn't have to take both those series to seven, was going to play an impact at some point. The Celtics superstars are playing more minutes and they've played more games in the postseason. And at some point, that's going to catch up with you. But they're sitting, Bumi. They're getting minutes on the bench. Jason Tatum goes out and he sits for like four or five minutes. Right, Jason Tatum Dude, played I don't, I don't 44. Wanna, I don't want... I don't want to hear, like hear about this fatigue. Like, guys, I'm hearing you, right? I'm hearing you, but I'm not hearing you. This is the NBA Finals. Jimmy Butler, in a Game 7 scenario, Miami, played 48 minutes and almost closed out that series. I don't want to hear about fatigue. Because that guy, in the last two games of the series, played the whole game. The entire game. And the offense ran through him alone. And he played through it. So for me, this fatigue thing, you're a paid professional basketball player. Like, if, rather, 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 and this, and this is the difference. That's perfect, such a hard perfect, take. Perfect, perfect, yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect example. No, no, no. Perfect example. Uh, Steph Curry shot terribly last night, right? But he didn't stop shooting. Did you notice that? Steph Curry didn't make a single three last night, but he kept shooting. Because he, he's a shooter, shoot and shoot. Exactly, exactly. He knows his job. He knows he knows what wins the Warriors games, right? And he's not going to go away from that, peel off of confidence. His green light is always on, right? And shout out to him because he's killed the Celtics multiple times. He's like, hey, man, I can't believe you guys are going to guard me throughout the series like this. So I'm just going to kill you. And that's what I'm going to do, right? Jason Tatum has had multiple mismatches. Last night, he had two turnovers. 
before his first field goal attempt. He shot 27% field goal from the two. 27% but around the rim. Right. And you're 6'9". Is that the team? Shoot, right? Miss free throws? The reason he does... The reason he does that as well is because that's what makes the offense more effective. Because if Steph started shooting, then the Boston Celtics would play a different form of defense. And so Steph's got to remain a shooting threat. Whether he's making or not, he's got to make the Celtics jump every time he touches the ball, which is how all the other guys are getting production. Yeah. A hundred percent agreed. And and the stock in stock contrast, Jason Tatum doesn't realize that when he's a drive threat and he kicks. He's still he's still productive and he still creates for the team because that still forces Golden, that forces Golden State to contract. This thing where he does where he settles for the three pointer, you're six nine, dude. You're six nine. You're six nine. You've got a seven foot wingspan and you're settling for a three. Golden State will take that all day. Yeah, and I think so. For, <clears throat> yeah, what you said earlier for me, this is how I know the series is done for me is that the Boston should have won the series because. What? Game four Had they made five. free throws? Yeah, game four. I mean, and not five. this we game. Wait, let games. me collect. Not yeah. this game. Sorry, let me correct my English. They should have won this game because had they scored free throws and had at least like three less turnovers, we would have probably gone to overtime or something. And you know, like this is if Steph Curry has a bad game. What about game four? If, they if Steph Curry has a bad game, you better win that game. If Steph, because Steph coming. Steph come here with 55 next game. That's why this is this is oh, this is over. It's curtains, dog. <laughs> it's curtains. I honestly think the game, if the Celtics wanted to win the series, the game they should have won was game four. Game four. Like 100%. that was their opportunity. Yeah. If the Celtics has won Very. game four, the series would have been done. And so, like I'm saying, for me, the momentum shift was there towards the Warriors. Warriors and game four. The thing. It was so Farah, you've been mentioning how Boston have been having like all like all these turnovers, right? But now are you saying that should they fix this problem, this turnover problem, that could result in a win? Yeah, I mean, the stats speak for themselves, dude. Like, when so the Boston Celtics fine, turn... Just turnovers. No, yeah, but you, but you see, you need, you need to understand the things that cause the turnovers that will cut out why we lose games, right? So... The reason... So, yeah. so one of the things that cause turnovers for us is driving in to double teams, Right? You're not, it means, it, what, what it tells me is you don't have any game awareness because you're driving into a double team and what's your plan? You're, you're, you're over-penetrating, you're getting to the, to, 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 to the paint where there are like three or four guys in there, right? And then you're turning around to look and, and, and find someone at the last minute, you're off balance. So that's already a poor attempt. And the thing about turnovers that's so damning for the Celtics is that you, you relinquish the opportunity to play a, a half-court set of defense on the other end because as soon as you turn the ball over, Golden State's gone. It's five on four. That's easy offense for them. So it's not just about the turnovers. The turnovers create a chain reaction where you're now not getting stops, right? You're not giving yourself an opportunity to score because if you, if, you, if you turn the ball over 18 times in a game, how many points are you missing out on competing for if that happens? That's 36 yeah. points at least that but you can compete for. And you're not getting the chance here. Yeah, I was I about to No, no, no. It's it's like, like, now I can get like, to that. Now I can, now we, I can get to that. Actually, the Celtics are making these turnovers in some sort of vacuum, right? And I don't Yo. think there's enough credit given to the Warriors' defense on those. I think a lot of last night's turnovers were forced. I think that the way the defense was active and moving and jumping, like they did a really great job of getting in the lanes and forcing turnovers. So I think that you know, it's great. It's one thing. The Celtics are getting turnovers. But let's look at how the Warriors are forcing those turnovers. Yeah. Yeah, look, 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 fair. That's, that's, that's a point that I, and I, I have to give one set there. In and amongst all my frustration, I have to give them my flowers, their flowers, because I think Andrew Wiggins has shut down Jason Tatum. He's fathered him in this series. I feel like that guy has stepped up with championship mentality. And that's something that gets, it gets injected in you when you walk into an organization. Because Wiggins' story has not been pretty, right? If he went MIA in this series, no one would have like faulted him. We'd be like, ah, okay, dude, you know. Like, but he has he's played decent, but now he steps up when it matters, and that's the thing that that sucks the most. Because even if the Celtics do win Game Six and go to Game Seven, I can't trust our best players in the clutch. They just they just hide. Even and, at the garden, and, dude, he, like even now at the garden. 
like they can go and win at the Garden. I think they can go and respond, and that's the other thing. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past the Celtics to not go and win okay. the next two games. I, I I don't put it past them because next they just two. weird. They they just Wait, weird. Where are you sitting? Sure. Where are you sitting right now? Like I think the series is done. No, I, I'm honestly the well, level of disrespect you, for the game of basketball. Was so Byron's the, whole Twitter the, feed from this morning is just chaos. Like, dude, I can't chaos. do it. He was going I can't do it. the most, right? I but but wait, are that. you saying I, Golden State won? Like, it's done, done. I it's think rap. it's good. It's good. I think it's a wrap. I'll be honest. I it's a wrap. Mm. Also, I think part of the problem is yeah. that the Celtics haven't been good at home, right? Yes, we know that it's like a hostile environment and the fans are great and loud or whatever, but they haven't. And that's the reality of it. Right, mm-hmm. there were all these things that the Celtics were relying on. Oh, they haven't won, ba- they haven't lost back to back games. Oh, this, that, the other. But the fact is, they actually haven't been good at home. So, if the Warriors close it out in six, it's not going to be a shock. Yeah, right. And I don't know how anybody thought the Celtics could win two games, um, in San Francisco. I just don't. The Warriors had that's lost their won. first game nah, at that's, home that's, that's, in that's, game, that's, game one, game and somehow we thought the Celtics were going to win two. In San Francisco, come that doesn't on. make sense. Come on, for me, like I, I, I hear you. Man. <laughs> it's tough to speak on it now, but now, nah, that like last night, like last night, that comeback that you really four, right? the Celtics, the Celtics, Celtics just stopped. games in San Francisco. Yes, we lost. We had last night's game in the bag, and these guys you won to one game away. in San Francisco, and the Warriors yeah, had lost game, game five. The so, you, so, so at no point were you afraid you were going to lose game five. No. I had that's zero tough, fear. That's a tough take. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at that. I'm looking at that Twitter. Look at I'm looking at that Twitter feed between you and Malachi. And I'm you better go find my Twitter different. feed. I'm All you guys is me saying. Unless teams have been deleted, he Oaks was stressing me. But, I mean, <laughs> look, man. I it, was not. It is what it is. I, I was cannot, a little bit I hurt. Talk. I was hurt in the third quarter, but I I didn't ah. think we were going to lose the game. Look, man, I can't talk back to a team that's up three two and playing the game the right way and and trying to win the game. I can't, yeah. I can't vouch for a team that refuses to play basketball the right way. I just refuse. I know I'm a still also, a Celtics fan, but I can't. One more thing that you touched on, Farrell, was the Andrew Wiggins thing. You know, Draymond Green said it in the page conference last night. He said a lot of the times when a player doesn't plan out, they talk about the player, and no one mm-hmm. ever looks at the organization. And mm-hmm. so he spoke about how Andrew Wiggins is proving what organizational fit means to NBA players. And I think that's such a big deal, right? Um, there's that famous Nick Wright take where he talks about how Andrew Wiggins is such a bust and it's never going to work out or whatever. Um, and I think people, that's what people underestimate is the power of a good organization like the Golden State Warriors. You look at how Andrew Wiggins has performed, how other players who have come in, you know, Gary Payton, you look at what his story with the Golden Jordan, State Warriors. Jordan, Jordan Poole. It's just, you look and you see an organization that is, One, good at really identifying talent. I mean, how many guys in this are through the draft? Hey, but they also have rags. Boomy, he goes. They also have money, dog. Ah, come on. He's on a $32 million contract. Come on. Okay, but but you talk about the ranks of Golden State, but Golden State, when the owners now bought it, right? When Joe Lacob bought the Lakers, I mean, bought the Warriors, they were not worth what they are now. And through mm. drafting and winning and Bob Myers being a fantastic GM, they've like quadrupled the value of the yeah. franchise. And so they have money, but that's not how it started out. So this whole thing that they have this big checkbook, whatever, whatever, the leverage to have that big checkbook has been built from the ground up. If anything, up. the Celtics had an advantage. Where? Where? Talent Where? Wise, dude. Le- you're talking about the legacy of talent was. The Lakers a few years no, ago. No, with money. Hey man, we've been broke, dog. But yeah, I don't want to talk too much about that. Yeah, I think I think I agree with you. I think yeah, that that's as good. That's going to be the biggest success of this championship. You know, in the past we've talked about um, the three those three players. Now this championship is literally that roster and the depth that the 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 organization has built. Because nobody nobody would have thought GP three would have come through. The GP two would have come out this hard. And Jordan mm-hmm. Poole and all these random guys, and they still have like people who are injured on that roster. That is why. Yeah. I mean, Wiseman still has to come back to this roster. That's crazy. And and is going to be a starting center. And then yeah. you know, if the world goes like we think it's going to go, 
uh, Jordan Poole going to be traded to Utah, then we kind of got a problem when when Rudy Gobert arrives in Golden State. So yeah, man. yeah no, no, no. so but but I feel like with this team, yeah. yeah, with this team, this is this is their chance. Like they, I, I feel like the this dynasty will be solidified with this chip, and Steph will shut up all these haters. I before I we get dynasty. to Chase and we move on, yeah, man. I feel dynasty. like these these guys change. They change the face of the game. Bro. But but one thing I will do now before yeah. we go on to we move on in this and I'm and I wish that the players could see this podcast and they could like look me in the eye. I'm challenging Jason Tatum <laughs> and that band of sorry Celtics to prove me wrong. You owe it to your loyal fans to put up a decent and honorable performance to close out this series. I don't know where it's going to go, but play the game the right way, please. Because there so are kids that play. look up to you. Faro, let's say they prove you wrong and actually win the series. Who do you have as finals MVP? Uh, Who wins which way? Do a finals MVP? Whoa, Cookie, that is... Whoa! Mario <laughs> Golden. <laughs> 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 You got it. You got it. I mean, so I got hypothetical, hypothetical scenario. Yeah, hypothetical. Hypothetical Wait, scenario. If Golden if, State wins. No, if, Celtics. If the Celtics win. Oh, then oh, Golden State wins. Golden State wins. Who's the fuck? Come on, it's gonna be Steph. Wait, if but Steph, that's political. It's gonna be Steph. No, if that's political. But Jalen, Jalen Brown would deserve MVP. Don't give it to Taylor. What? It. So wait, so wait. If Celtics win, wait. If Celtics win, are you saying Jalen Brown for Finals MVP? Yeah, he must get it. Tim Tim and then for Golden State? Steph Curry, come on. Come I want to say something about this. Come thing. on. Because we're going to have to Steph. have this conversation. Chad, Steph do deserves not, it. Do not do this. Steph Don't deserves do this. it because... Steph deserves it because... Because he beat the Celtics. It Stop it. Wait. Because they randomly gave it to Andre Iguodala one year. They randomly <laughs> oh, gave it to KD. No. Yo, guys, we're talking about random, random. Randomly to Ke- Kevin Look, Durant. Kevin, no, but Steph, oh, guys, Steph, oh, no, oh, Steph, oh. Steph, guys. It was a bit, it was, it was a photo finish. He yeah, should have had it. It wasn't so, It was never close. Using my close. Andre, using my Andre See, Iguodala mentality. Watch them give no, it to no, him. Here's my problem. Watch with Andrew Wiggins really. take it. No, 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 my problem with this take is it diminishes Steph's performance now. Yes, Boy. Andre should have never won it. Steph should have won it there. But the reason Steph should win it in this series has nothing to do with past years. For me, like, don't diminish Steph's impact in the series. I'm not yes, Steph had one bad game. And it wasn't even, like, a terrible game, guys. Yes, he'd make a three. Yeah, but Andrew it wasn't, like, consistent. game on the planet. So Andrew don't Wiggins is not done in the Celtics. It's Steph Curry, dog. Steph Curry Andrew Wiggins, Steph Curry yo, Andrew, Wiggins Andrew Wiggins defending Jason Tatum. Stop. <laughs> stop. Yes, stop. <laughs> Locking him up. Don't, don't do <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> don't <laughs> do this. <laughs> you see, this is why we can't take your hot take seriously. But there must have an okay, element of spicy truth in there. No, but guys, it's going to go to Steph Curry. But I think Andrew Wiggins has made a bit of a you know, he, well, well, the game. gap is so Pretty big. Good, it's not the so gap in the big. finals MVP race it's is massive, so big. Dude. It's so massive. It's not even close. Look, so on Golden State, hey, we, woke up, so we woke up. We woke up. We woke up, and Andre Iguodala was a finals MVP. He can take that to the bank, and we were all shocked. That's all I'm I saying. I mean, yeah. it was the same he logic. I get that. it, but that logic so, was flawed to begin with. So, wait, Chad, Yo, if man. the Celtics win, who do you have as finals MVP? First of all, that's that's never gonna that's never gonna happen. But um. Shame. As a shout out, I'm gonna give it to Al Horford for these random bursts of no, um, like, <laughs> <laughs> these random bursts of OG. You know what? No, you, man, know what you, know, you know, you know, you know how Murphy's Law works, dude. Like Clay was going off in the interview. Murphy's Law, dog. I promise you. <laughs> Watch. Like, don't next don't game. Play. The team's already yeah, down. Game. Better make sure yeah. you take care of business. Like, I, I, and if there's one thing that I would give the Celtics, like a little, like last glimpse of motivation. Is the Warriors are really acting like the series is really done? Clay is like, I can't wait to go down to Boston. Da, 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 da. Like, that's the only thing you have to feed off of. Like, use that and punch them in the mouth. Just use that and punch them in the mouth. Go steal game six. You just have to win on Thursday. That's all you have to do. Go punch somebody in the mouth, go win the game. Game six, that's game six at the garden, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's at the garden. So, so just go I, punch somebody in the mouth, go win the game, dude. Ugly, yeah. p- pretty, I don't care. Go win the game and then reevaluate for game seven. But like, just like yeah, dude, it's Dima. Like, do it for your own. Like, it, it would be, it would be so it would be it would be so disappointing if the Celtics played the same way because they've done the same thing. 
They did the same thing in game three, four, five. If they just if they if they just choose just 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 be uncharacteristic and don't turn. I mean, don't turn Laura, you did mention That's that. That's all I'm asking. You did mention that the Celtics. I mean, you guys enjoy you know being the underdog or playing from behind. So I mean, this could be motivation for them. Yeah, but you see, this one's different because it just feels like. It's no, it's the not finals. The finals getting beat. The finals. The That's finals are different. Dude. They'll be getting nah, beat. Nah, nah, nah. The, the, the finals. The finals beat. are very different because we had more adversity to face in terms of things that we had to fix in, in previous series. And that's what hurts me the most. Like in that, in that, the, in the Bucks series, we had to find different ways to, to win. You know. It was Grayson Allen. I'm telling you, Jan, the way Giannis was playing, the way Brook not, Lopez, we, we had to make so many adjustments. And in this series, it's like, dude, just rebound the ball. Box out, See, rebound I the ball. I think the Stop Warriors the starting out the series badly has the Celtics thinking false things. No. I think that I'm we sorry. haven't I seen can't agree that. I, It's what I, Steph I, said I after know. game four, right? Steph was like, I still feel like we haven't played to our best ability. We have not yeah, seen the haven't. best version of the Golden State Warriors. Exactly. We've seen but the that's best version point. of Steph. Whoa, whoa, we've seen the best version of Steph in stretches. And last night we saw the best version of other people. But we still haven't seen a combination of the best of version of yeah. everybody and Steph. So yeah, I think that the way the Warriors started out the series made the Celtics fan believe that, you know, this is not... These are the championship pedigree Golden State Warriors. Nah, for me... And you know, you know what the thing is, dude? You know, you know what the thing is? Golden State haven't scored... We haven't been prolific in, in their scoring. And you're right, they haven't, they haven't played their best because they haven't had to. The, you know, the, the, thing about, the thing about this time of the season, don't do, don't do too much, dude. Win games. The finals is about winning games. If there's one play, if you run a pick and roll the entire series and you're scoring and you're winning off of it, don't go away from it. Win the chip, dude. And that's the thing. Golden State hasn't had to play well. And that's what's, that's what's making me, that's what's hurting me so much. Dude, how do you go, get to a game where Steph Curry doesn't make a three? One lose. Golden State, and Golden is, State go 19, they miss, 19, they miss their first 19, 19 three-point attempts and you lose the game by double digits. You're a loser. Go home. What? Oh, Mind you, goodness. Andrew Wiggins didn't make a three either last night. Both Andrew Wiggins and Steve didn't make a three last night. He took it back night. to 1990 basketball. Let's, they're they're mid-rangers. It's about mid-rangers and layups. And, and it's, it's the quality of shot that he was getting, dude. Like, he wasn't even, he was not rushed. He was not... Yeah. He, he played aggressive, but he didn't play rushed. Like, it was... Man, that was, that was a good performance, dude. And, like, things like 13 rebounds, right? That's just, that's just wanting it more than the next guy. Wiggins yeah. is yeah. not, he's, he's yeah. not athletically more gifted than most of those guys on the Celtics team, but he just wanted the ball more. Yeah. And if you, if, dude, what? I'm sorry, but if, you, if you're not going to want it, then just go pack it in, dude. Pack it yeah. in. Let's go watch movies in so, Cancun. I can't yeah, stand so, for that type of basketball. I refuse. Because as a player, I, I like, oh, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Grab a board. I'm feeling you. You're saying grab a board, do some defense. Grab a board, I, dude. Grab a board. <laughs> like some it's also going to be pretty boring if they, if, it's going to be boring if they lift it in Boston. I'll be so satisfied as a Lakers fan, but I wanted to go to game seven because the one thing about the series that's been my number one critique is that we haven't had really close games. Like, it's a two-point game with 30 seconds left on the clock. I was just like, it's either teams are getting blown out or, like, it's a nine-point lead and somebody didn't score some free throws in the, in the third quarter, you know? So I'm hoping for a close game, Farrah, for your sake. But it's alright. Yeah, dude. They must just prove me wrong because at this point, I like the, I I can't be I can't be this crazy all the time, dude. Like I can't be saying the same thing day in day out. You're making me look like I'm insane. Like. <laughs>